a refurbished Norwegian weather ship available for charter and a Costa Rica Panama Canal cruise. That's coming up right now. Hey cruisers, welcome back to Coffee and Comments, April 3rd, 2024. Hard to believe it's already April. Okay, we got a few news stories to cover, but for those of you who are new, this is a relatively new show, so some of you may not be familiar. This may be your first time here. I'm the president of Cruise Report. We've been around for about 21 years. We've been reviewing cruise ships, cruise destinations, luxury resorts, hotels. We have done, I have to write the numbers down because I can't keep up. I always use notes when I do these things. I guess I could use a teleprompter, but today I'm just winging it. Uh, we've been on 144 different cruises with 43 different cruise lines and 115 different ships. And the only reason I mention that is because we do have a pretty broad background, a pretty broad range of cruises, types of cruising, type, types of travel. And we've done everything from luxury ships to really crude accommodation expedition ships. We've done luxury expedition ships. We've done river cruises. We've been on the oceans, been on the lakes. I mean, we've done a lot of different types of cruises. And like I say, the only reason I mention that is to let you know kind of what our background is and our experience is. So we feel like we have a pretty good range under our belt of what we are able to talk about. Now, something just came across my desk that I thought was kind of interesting, and I thought I would mention it to you. For those of you out there that are really into heavy-duty expedition cruising, maybe you've got a small group of people that want to go in together and do a really immersive expedition cruise to the Arctic. I just found out about a company called Polaris. I think that's how you say it, Polaris Yachting. And they have a, they've converted a Norwegian weather ship. This is an older ship and it's a smaller ship, but this thing is super capable of dealing with ice and those types of conditions. And it only can handle up to 12 guests. But if you have 12 people, maybe it's a company that you want to reward your workers with something really different and unique. You can charter this ship. They've got, let me just read something to you about it. This is in August, September, 2024. Uh, they have an exclusive artists retreat cruise. And I'll put some pictures up on the screen for you. I'm guessing since it only holds 12 people, there must be four staterooms that hold two people and four staterooms that hold one person. It's just my guess. That would be 12 people. But basically, you can, during this seven-day sailing, you can study with a Greenlandic photographer, whatever that is. Or if you choose, you could also have a poet on board, or you can have a musician or a specialty chef. So they are basically customizing this experience for your group. Pretty interesting. Uh, I'll put a link on the screen and in the description of the video if you want to get some more information on this. But it is $343,728 for the week. Now, that's for all 12 people, obviously. Uh, so if you're looking for something really interesting, really different, I think that's it. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get them to invite us on that to experience that. So let's get back to what we will be doing. Speaking of expedition ships, we're going to be on SH Diana, which is one of the Swan Hellenic ships. It's their newest ship. And we will be on that ship the end of this month. We're flying to Costa Rica from Dallas-Fort Worth to, into Punta Arenas, or actually into San Jose. Uh, we'll be spending one night before we get on the ship, and then they'll transfer us to the ship uh, the next day. 
And then that ship will be going to some different, very interesting places along the coast of Costa Rica. We will make our way to the Panama Canal. I was a little concerned because I've been hearing reports of cruise, cruises being canceled because the Panama Canal is going through some really interesting challenges right now. It's very, the water levels are low because they haven't had much rain. And I've heard of a lot of cruises getting canceled. So uh, I was concerned that that might be the case, but I double checked with our contact at Swan Hellenic. They promised me the cruise is still on. So I don't know how that works. I don't know if the Panama Canal does a, like a lottery system or how they decide you know, which ships get, get to go through and which ones can't pass through. Uh, this ship is small enough to where as it goes through those locks, they could probably put two or three of these ships in a lock at a time, and they do that. They will stack up the ships uh, as they go through the locks. So we'll just have to see how that works. But the reason I mention this is because if you haven't done so already, you want to make sure you follow us on Instagram and Facebook because we will be posting reels and you know photos and all kinds of updates to our Instagram account during that trip. So if you're interested in expedition cruising or even if you just love cruising, uh, go ahead and check it out. Follow us on Instagram because we're always posting stuff on Instagram that you're going to find interesting. And that brings me to another issue of subscribing to our channel. If you haven't done so already, please click that little subscribe button down below. Don't forget to hit that notification bell because that way YouTube will let you know when we come out with our new videos. Very important. And that brings me to an even another issue of monetization. Uh, our YouTube channel is not monetized. You may see some new links on the screen as you go through our videos and in our descriptions. And we have been on YouTube since I think about 2008. And we were monetized. And then in about 2012, we lost our monetization. And we don't know why. I have contacted Google and YouTube multiple times. Every year I contact them two or three times. I get the same boilerplate response back. There basically is nobody there to just get on the phone and talk to about this and talk through it and deal with it and get it resolved. But it was a big hit to our channel and to our revenue stream when we lost our monetization. So we get no revenue from YouTube. So we basically rely on sponsors and on our loyal viewers like yourselves, our subscribers. So you'll notice a new Venmo account at Cruise Report. If you find a video that you think is extremely helpful, that you find value in, you're more than well uh, welcome to help support this channel through our Venmo account. Anything you do is much appreciated. Uh, that's all I'm going to say about that. Just let you know that we're not monetized. So we rely on sponsors and on our viewers to help offset the costs of making these videos. There's camera gear involved. There's travel expenses involved. There's lots of other things that go into making these videos. So anyway, we appreciate your support. So now is the time where I've got my coffee, which apparently my mug has gone dead. This is my Ember mug, which I absolutely love. And the Ember mug has a heating element in it. Keeps your coffee or your tea warm for up to two hours, and it really keeps it hot. I love this thing, but I've been up since about five o'clock this morning, so it's already, it's already died on me, but I've still got the, uh, my coffee in here. And if you're interested in the Ember mug, I'll put a link in the description of this video. Now, it's you can buy them on Amazon. They're, they're, they're not cheap, but they're very well made. And they also make a travel mug, which I think I'm going to get the travel mug to take with us on our cruises. Because a lot of times in the morning I'm working, I want my coffee, I want it to stay hot, and I think I'm going to get the travel mug. So anyway, check that out. Okay, I've got my MacBook Pro here. I've got all of the comments that I'm going to talk about today. This is where I go through your comments on our videos, and I respond uh, online on this video. 
I don't always read the name of the people that post the comment because sometimes these names, uh, posters, poster names can be very, very cryptic and hard to kind of... This first comment is on our last video, the cruise update I did back in March. And uh, the person says, glad to see you back. Other than tips for travelers, there aren't many travel channels that appeal to my more mature sense of adventure. Uh, tips for travels uh, travelers is a reference to Gary Bembridge's YouTube channel. He also has an Instagram account. I follow him on both. Uh, Gary does a great job with his videos, very high quality, very good information. And we he's one of the uh, YouTubers that we follow on a regular basis. We watch all of his videos. Very good. Well, thank you. I appreciate that comment. The next one is also on our cruise coffee and comments from last month. And uh, this is Z1 Baseman says, We will be on Sun Princess in November. I'm looking forward to your review. Yes, we are scheduled for September. And we will be on for quite a while on a transatlantic cruise. So we should have plenty of time to cover all the different venues. There's a lot of YouTube content right now on Sun Princess. And quite frankly, we've watched almost all of it. And quite frankly, I don't think it's fair to the ship. I don't think it's fair to the viewers. The ship was not ready when they released it. There's a lot of venues that weren't open, such as entertainment. A lot of the restaurants and dining options weren't available. And that's when Princess decided to have the media on board to cover the ship. Well, I, you know, I'm not sure how good a decision that was. This is pretty common now with new ship launches inaugurals and that's why we weren't in a rush to get on Sun Princess. We wanted to wait until they get all the stuff ironed out because what you're seeing right now on YouTube is not what you're going to experience. It's not giving Princess time to really get this ship up and running. So we will be on board the ship in September. They'll have had plenty of time to get their to get their legs and get you know, all their systems worked out. It's a brand new ship, brand new design. It's not like they can just bring people over from a Royal class ship, put them on Sun Princess and have them know everything because it's a whole different layout. It's a whole different, it's a bigger ship. It's going to have more kids more than likely. So anyway, we'll see you in September on that ship. Now this is from B. Timmer. Uh, he, this is also on our cruise update from last month. He says, one of the things we like sailing on Holland America is that for the most part, they serve the food to you in the buffet. Currently, we're on the Regal Princess and everyone serves themselves, which we don't care for. And they've also banned door decorations. So Princess apparently no longer allows you to put decorations on the doors. I agree with you on the self-service buffet. We are not fans of self-service buffet. We think it's a uh, sanitation issue. I was happy to hear that on Sun Princess, Princess has moved away from that and they are now having crew members serve the guests in the buffet. Okay, let's go on to the next comment, also from our cruise update last month. They say, uh, this person says, Eerie, Eerie, I'm not sure how you say the name. I'm always suspicious of reviews when YouTubers are given the cruise for free. Can I trust their reviews are honest? It depends on the reviewer. It depends on the YouTuber. There's, uh, I, I'm, I'm very skeptical of any review I see online or on YouTube. I question everything. I don't. I don't take any one person's word for a review. Uh, this brings up a bigger question. Can you trust journalists who get the cruises for free? Now, we sometimes are invited by the cruise lines, and they don't pay us to be on the ship, but they will provide us with a free stateroom, or sometimes, and sometimes they'll provide us with other amenities, but sometimes not. So can you trust a review from someone that's getting the cruise for free? Well, generally, the person getting the, or the people getting the, the cruise for free are professional journalists or me, what the cruise line considers to be legitimate media. Uh, they're not just a random guest that might have 500 or 1,000 
YouTube followers. These are usually people that have been in the business a while. They know what they're doing. Generally speaking, the cruise lines are okay with somebody giving a totally honest review. Now, we try to always be totally honest and upfront. We let the cruise lines know if we, if we experience a problem, we may talk about it in our videos or on our reviews. And as I mentioned in my last video, there have been cruise lines that did not invite us back because we may have said something that they found offensive or that they didn't like, that they felt like was a negative review. There was just a recent issue with uh, Ben and David where they were on MSC cruises in the Yacht Club and they were giving a pretty much glowing review, but they had done a previous review of an MSC ship. They were very honest. They said exactly what they felt were the issues and the problems, and I guess MSC took offense to that. And uh, anyway, if you want more information about that, check out Ben and David's channel. So we have had those situations where we, we've we never been asked to stop filming like they were. I mean, they actually came to them and said, turn your cameras off, you can't film anymore. We've never had that situation. But we have had situations where we post a video at the end of a cruise and it be the last time we've ever been invited back on cruise line. Now, I can't tell you for sure. I've never had a cruise line say, we're not inviting you back because you said something negative. It's never been like that. They've never told us that's the reason. We just suspect that might be the reason. However, most cruise lines, they're very confident in their product. They know there can be issues from time to time, and they know we're going to be fair. They know we're going to not slam them in a critical way without giving them a chance to respond or to resolve the issues. So can you trust cruise reviews from a YouTuber that gets a free cruise? It, like I say, I think it's going to depend on the on the YouTuber. I don't know that you can trust any review from anybody regardless of whether they got the cruise for free. Uh, there are a lot of travel agents who have YouTube channels and they may not get the cruise for free, but they may be getting a travel agent rate. You know, cruise lines have travel agent rates where they get a discounted rate on a stateroom. And so you could say, well, can you really trust that? I mean, it depends on the person, it doesn't it? It's going to depend on the individual. There are people who have relationships with a travel agency. They might be the onboard personality, but the travel agency is picking up the cost of the cruise for that person, and they're getting essentially a free cruise. And then you've got people who uh, are just regular guests. They're not a travel agent. They're not affiliated. With, and by the way, we're not a travel agency, and we're not affiliated with a travel agency or any seller of travel. If a travel agency were to sponsor our video and pay us to put out a video, we would let you know that up front, but that has never been the case up till now. Then you've got regular people who go on a cruise and they pay for it, but maybe they've only been on two or three cruises or five cruises. They don't have a breadth of knowledge. They're not really experienced in how to explain the product and explain it in a way that people can really benefit from it. So. Do you really get that much value from that? I don't know. It's not a perfect world. I think you have to get your information from a variety of sources, just like news. You have to get your information from regular passengers. You have to get some from professional journalists, from YouTubers. And then you kind of find people you relate to and that you think you can trust, and you just go from there, and you make the best decisions you can. Let's say... There's a travel agent that has a large, it doesn't even have to be a travel agent, but let's say somebody goes on a cruise and they've got a large group cruise booked six months from now on a specific ship. So they may have blocked a hundred staterooms on that ship. And even though they paid for the cruise they're on at the moment, they have a vested interest in promoting that ship because they want to be able to sell those staterooms for that group cruise. That doesn't mean they're dishonest. It just means that you should be aware of that. That that, that may also be a situation. Uh, John Kincaid says, this is on in response to my celebrity 
I believe it was a Celebrity Beyond food review that we did. We'll be cruising in October. Very much looking forward to it. However, I am amazed at the upcharges for the specialty dining venues. Surely a lot more than what we are accustomed to. This is going to be their first Celebrity Cruise. You know, Celebrity has raised the prices of their specialty restaurants from when we were on Celebrity last time, which is about a year ago, January. So they have raised their prices. They're, they're starting to get a little steep. All the cruise lines have been raising the price of their specialty restaurants. And it'll be real interesting to see how this plays out because, I mean, as long as people are booking them, as long as people are going to these restaurants and paying the fees, I guess they're going to keep charging more. This is also about our Celebrity Beyond review. Just got off Beyond a couple of weeks ago. I couldn't agree more with your review, especially your comments about the staff. We absolutely love the ship and the crew. Thanks for the video. Well, thank you, Keith. Uh, yeah, Celebrity does a great job. Great people, great staff, great crew, Captain Kate. Uh, they're all amazing. This is also on Celebrity Beyond. The next comment from Shelly Rubin. What do you think of the Infinity Balconies? I've heard mostly negative. We do generally stay in a balcony or veranda stateroom on most of the cruises we go on. And we went into this with a open mind, but maybe a little concerned about what this infinity balcony was going to be like. But I've got to tell you, we liked it. We thought it was fine. It's really more of an ocean view stateroom, but it has a full size wall to wall window that comes down halfway. So it kind of is like it's kind of like a hybrid between an ocean view and a balcony. Uh, there's pros and cons. Read our review of the infinite balcony. I mean, I, we have a video on it out there, but overall, we would never hesitate to stay in one again. I mean, I, I thought it was very comfortable, and we liked it. So overall, it was good. We love celebrities, so there you go. This is from Joshua. This is about Crystal Serenity, which we were on. Joshua asks, was the afternoon tea every day or just on sea days? Every day. Crystal does afternoon tea every day, whether you're in port or whether you're at sea. Very, very nice tea service. Now, this is also on our Crystal Serenity review from Bee, Bear, Bee Bear's Mama. <laughs> okay. Uh, does Crystal Serenity have a casino? No. Neither of the Crystal ships have a casino. Well, we felt like that was odd. And the space on the ship that did previously house the casino is kind of a very barely used space. It's kind of an odd space. And I'm sure Crystal's planning on doing a lot of Asia cruises and the Asian population are really big on gambling and casinos, as we like casinos too, but I'm just saying in the Asia market, they're going to have to have a casino. So I don't know if they're ever going to put a casino back in. Maybe they're looking for a partner for a casino relationship so that somebody's managing that casino. I don't know. I don't know the story on that. Now, the next comment is from user KG, and this is a comment on our video we did on renewing or getting a new passport. And we did this through Gen Visa, which we've used for many years. So if you're interested or you're in the market for a new passport or you want to get your passport renewed, make sure you check out that video. It goes into a lot of detail as to why you might want to consider using a passport service as opposed to doing it on your own. But this comment basically just says, thank you. You're welcome. Great video. Check it out. Gen Visa. This is on our Princess Discovery Princess review said, your wife looks like a refined Kathy Lee Gifford. <laughs> wow. Um, I thought Kathy Lee Gifford looked pretty refined myself. Uh, first of all, she's uh, Ricky is not my wife, technically. We, uh, we've been together for uh, going on 30 years. We've been, but we're technically not officially married. So... Uh, just so you know, but we have been together for 30 years. We've been traveling together 
uh, during that time. And she's been with me of 144 cruises. I think she's been with me on probably 141 of them. I think there's two or three where she couldn't go because she was taking care of her mother. But anyway, thank you for the comment. Very kind. I'm sure she'll be appreciative of that. And I'm, I am working very hard to get Ricky to be on camera on this Swan Hellenic cruise. Our goal is to do some vlogging from the ship, tell you a little bit about what's going on every day, short videos, but just to give you a little updated information. So we'll make sure we get her on camera. She's a little, she's not as much of a camera person as I am. She does more of the editing, a lot of the photography. She'll shoot a lot of video, but she doesn't do as much interaction on camera. But we're going to see if we can't change that. Okay, this is from Laura. This is on a video we did on cruise technology where I talked about all the stuff we take with us when we go on a cruise. I'm about to update that with a new version. But uh, it says, this is the most organized and detailed cruise aficionado I've ever come across. Maybe she means aficionado. I don't, I'm not sure how that, I'm not sure what that word is. Uh, there are idiots with 300,000 likes. We need to grow this channel. It's amazing. Well, Laurie, I, it's Laurie, not Laura, Laurie. Laurie, thank you. I am glad you enjoyed the video, and I agree with you. We do need to grow the channel. So anything you can do, like sharing this video on your, or any video on our channel, sharing it through your social media, through your Instagram, through your Facebook, make sure you're sharing these videos. That helps us gain new subscribers. Make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you follow us on Instagram. Make sure you, when you subscribe, you click that notification bell too. That's really important. Okay. And put your comments in down below. What you what do you like? What do you not like about these uh, videos? Okay. Jerry Coleman says, this is on our Viking Polaris cruise we did last year. We will take Polaris cruise to the Great Lakes in September. Would you suggest a cabin on the starboard or port side when docking in the ports. Your review is wonderful. Thank you. Okay, Jerry, thank you for that comment. Uh, as far as port or starboard, if memory serves me correctly, and my memory is not something that usually serves me correctly, but if memory serves me correctly, we almost always disembarked on the starboard side seems like we always docked on the starboard side. So if you want a view of the port, if that's what you're going for, uh, my on our cruise, now that doesn't mean they're going to do it this way on your cruise. They may turn the ship a different direction. They may back in. Who knows? I, I can't promise just because we were on the starboard side. Mo I just remember disembarking on the starboard side in I, almost every port. There's no bad cabin, whether you're on the starboard or the port side. I really don't think it's a huge issue. You're going to love that cruise, by the way. It's a really, really cool ship. Love their expedition ships. This next comment from Layla is also on our Scarlet Lady review. Love, love your reviews. We don't drink alcohol at all. Is there more of a party atmosphere on Virgin Voyages? We love how low-key celebrity is. Um, yes, there's definitely more of a party atmosphere on Virgin than there is on celebrity, I would say for sure. Now, it didn't really affect us one way or the other. We're not party animals, and we tend to be in bed you know, before 10 o'clock anyway, or by 10 o'clock, 10.30. It depends on the shows. But uh, you know, Virgin is one of those ships, if you want to stay up till midnight, 1 a.m., 2 a.m., they got stuff going on. We're in bed sleeping. So it didn't affect us negatively at all. We really enjoyed our time on Virgin. I think it's got something for everybody. I think if you're uh, young, old, I we just really enjoyed it. And this is my last comment, also on our Virgin Scarlet Lady review. This is from, I can't, June, J.R. J.R. Harm something, Harm Vet. Excellent job on this video and very informative. Could you help us find the right cruise? We're looking for, I think he means to say we're looking for a cruise line that caters to our age group 50 plus. Do you have any recommendations? 
uh, we uh, we say to our age group, we're referring to a cruise line where the passengers are primarily 50 plus. Well, since you posted that comment to the Scarlet Lady review we did, I think probably 50% of or more of the people on board that ship were 50 plus. Now, that's going to vary from cruise to cruise based on the destination and based on the length of the cruise. That could make you could have a younger crowd on say a 3 or 4 day cruise, you could have an older crowd on a 7 day cruise. It's hard to say for sure. Uh, I don't think you'd want to exclude Virgin from the list, but I would probably think about starting with Princess Cruises, even though they're having more kids now. Holland America, I would probably start with Holland America and Celebrity. Those are probably more of your adult-oriented cruise lines. And then Princess, and I say that only in third place because Princess is targeting more families than they used to. But Holland America and Celebrity still tend to be a little more aimed toward the adult market. You will find kids, but not as much as you would probably on Princess. Now, if you want to go adult only, where there are no kids on board, I would say look at Viking or Virgin. I think those both of those don't allow kids under the age of 18 or 19. I'm not sure what the age limit is. But Viking, Virgin, both excellent choices if you're looking for an adult-only experience. And I'm sure there's others out there. Those are just, These are just the ones that come to mind right off the top of my head. Okay, thanks for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please, please, please give it a thumbs up. That is very important to our YouTube channel. Put it in the comments down below what you think of this video. And I will see you from SH Diana. We will be vlogging. Hopefully our Wi-Fi will let us post some videos from the ship. Definitely be posting short videos on Instagram from the ship. I think we'll be able to do that for sure. But anyway, we're looking forward to it. Until we see you next time, smooth sailing.